Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the D Rich Show, where we talk anything and everything crypto. Now, here's your host, D Rich. Hey, everybody, welcome back to the D Rich Show. This is D Rich, and today is May 27th, 2021. How's everybody's Thursday doing? I hope everybody is doing well, and this video finds you in good health, good spirits, good energy, as always. And I want to make sure that, you know, we always start off by saying that because everybody needs to feel good and excited about everything that they're doing, and with those things. Um, all things are possible. So anyway, guys, I want to thank all the new people that came on board for the journey. Again, um, I appreciate your subscribership and um, those who have been here. I want to thank you as well because you guys uh, are appreciated and valued um, just as much as you uh, continue to look forward to videos coming from me every single day, Monday through Friday. I'm not sure about the hours or timing, but more than likely it'll be um, before the day time ends so anyway folks let's go ahead and get right into the uh, coin market cap for today as we see bitcoin's dominance is at 42.5 percent up here and ethereum is at 18.8 .8. excuse me again uh, bitcoin is at uh, 39,144 dollars so again um, still leading no worries um, ethereum is at 27,885 dollars 97 cents and then we got Binance Coin at 374.61, um, up over a percent. As we can uh, see, the market is still trying to come back, folks, uh, from last week and the weekend um, and some previous times before uh, when we see the uh, market take a dip. But, you know, that's not here nor there because that's all kind of buying opportunities. And you got Cardano at $1.70, XRP just under a buck. So again, um, you know, it's looking very good for um, XRP um, as it's staying stable at certain levels, um, whether um, it breaks to the upside or the downside. Um, I think that we're still in good position uh, no matter what, because at the end of the day, um, it's XRP um, that will probably uh, more than likely uh, rule them all. So um, whether it goes up or down, <clears throat> just huddle your position and you'll be uh, good from there. So anyway, Dogecoin is at 33 cents at uh, number seven there, and Polkadot is 2462. And as you can see, um, USDC um, still getting in that market cap. Again, pay attention to um, that value um, because before you know it, it'll be jumping back up to number eight here um, as we continue to uh, see this uh, coin, whether it's a stable coin or not. Uh, gain momentum um, as you can see um, what they're trying to do by getting tether up out of there whether they do or not um, you got to have another stable coin to um, represent um, the value when it comes to transferring it uh, for you know whether USD for United States folks I guess oh anyway um, ICP is at $136.36 and um, right outside of the top 10, you got number 11, Uniswap 2909, up 11%, 11.5% actually. So anyway, um, look at the coin market cap. Again, I like to go over it to kind of keep abreast of things. EOS is a um, potentially good um, buy there when it came down. Um, but again, <clears throat> look at its all-time high, and then you can kind of make a decision from, from that point. Um, I do hold that in my portfolio, so... Um, if that's one of those um, long-term investments, I guess, if you want to say that. And I do collect interest um, on this uh, token on uh, the Celsius network. So if you have a Celsius app, um, I highly recommend that you uh, get one. Uh, download it to uh, make sure that you are getting interest on your cryptocurrencies. And again, what I'll do is I'll leave that in the description like a, you know, a link. So if you are interested in and in transferring your cryptocurrency um, over there to um, capitalize on some of that i know that there's eos there's a couple others um, that give you um, a good return and there's a couple that um, you can see that will be um, introduced to their platform 
So anyway, folks, you can kind of take a peek at what's going on in the market and uh, make some decisions um, at your own leisure, I suppose. Um, you know, again, I always encourage you not to break yourself or um, leave yourself um, hanging out to dry with nothing uh, to bear. So you know, always take care of your family. Take care of the um, food that you need to put on your um, table, the gas you need to put in your vehicle to get to and from work, and making sure that you take care of all your uh, necessities um, because sometimes um, there's things that we want but we got to be patient enough <clears throat> to place those things uh, on the side to a later date so again um, do your due diligence um, this is never financial advice I'm not a financial advisor um, I just kind of want to let you know these are some of the things that I try to avoid um, so I can de-risk um, some of those other uh, factors um, where I can spend more time investing. Anyway, folks, um, this is coming live from Bitcoin News. Zenfin can act as a solution for Ethernet slow transaction speeds. And this is May 26, 2021. So let's go ahead and get in it. Um, for those folks who like Zenfin XDC, um, I do hodl this. And I do think that it will be um, part of the ISO uh, 222 regulations. Um, are part of that network. So, <clears throat> again, you could get Zenfin on uh, BitTrue and also in their Power Piggy, you can also do get staking rewards there too. Zenfin provides a solution for frustrating Ethereum slow transaction speeds. Zenfin is a hybrid blockchain technology firm optimized for international trade and finance, and its native token is XDC. And according to CoinGecko, the XDC price trades at five cents right now. And this is at the time of writing. On adding the gas, the Ethereum transaction speeds could be expedited to stimulate miners. And this could be a good move during high no uh, network congestion. And the gas fees continue to increase with no end over 2021, dealing a significant blow to ERC. 20 potential projects to operate and again guys i mentioned to you the other day where i was trying to take some these erc20 tokens off of my ledger and again they're just going to stay put because again the gas fees are astronomical for me to even consider it and again anyway uh kadena co-founder stuart pope joy adds a deluge of transactions to serve the latest craze simply because it's attracting more users than your app and the solution to your ethereum slow transaction feeds um, here Zenfin offers a fantastic solution that helps XDC haulers to stake over 108 master nodes and Zenfin supports over 2,000 transactions per second and allows your ethereum smart contracts to run with instantaneous transactions confirmations Zenfin also offers the best alternative solution for Ethereum and also the project aims of liaising with government in order to reduce worldwide infrastructure gaps and the motive behind the project is to enable investors to finance infrastructure projects in an efficient way rather than wasting time on paperwork. And added to this, other blockchain projects also serve as an alternative solution to Ethereum's issue tron trx is also a blockchain related operating system however its mainnet was launched in 2018 which enables blockchain to reach 2000 transactions per second and this far exceeds the speed of ethereum and moreover the minimal transaction fees tron stands on par with leading traditional payment firms like paypal with no transaction fees Tron already stands on par with leading traditional payment processors like PayPal and also Polkadot is an open source sharding multi-chain protocol that offers the cross-chain transfer of any information, therefore, I'm, therefore um, making a wide range of blockchains interoperable with each other. And moreover, Polkadot can access up to a thousand transactions per second, and this is 10 times the speed of Ethereum. So anyway, guys, I am a hodler of Tron, um, TRX, Zenfin, and Polkadot. So these are some good um, ecosystem 
um, are, you know, blockchains. And I mentioned that there's multiple blockchains and they're also going to build their, you know, like their umbrella. So they'll be the main, they'll be in the main gig and then they're going to build their um, platform underneath them. It's just like a business. If you drop have a Dropbox, you have different menus and you could go to see different things. So anyway, um, I'm bullish on all of these and I'm, I'm really excited about the low cost, the prices on these. So um, Polkadot is kind of up there in price, but if you can afford it, you know, I'd say at least get a few of them in your portfolio um, for a long term um, hold. Anyway, um, cryptocurrencies are close to reaching a big milestone versus gold by one Wall Street firm's count. And this was published Tuesday, May 18th, which was last week, folks. So I'm sorry for posting so a little bit late, but I just want to cover um, some of the news that's going on with cryptocurrencies. Um, because, again, on this channel, we always talk about anything and everything crypto. Um, the total value of the cryptocurrency market is um, now above $2 trillion, um, as we know. Um, it's a, a below that um, at this uh, point of the video and put it nearly on par with the amount of gold held in um, as an investment, according to uh, Bernstein. And crypto supporters often cite the potential for Bitcoin to rival gold as a long term store of value. Investors need to find return streams that can hedge debasement risk and be a diversifier to equity risk at higher levels of inflation which we're starting to see, noting that cryptocurrencies can also fit that bill. And when the value for gold, um, for other purposes, is also considered, the precious metal market is still significantly larger. So again, guys, I'm not here to speculate, um, but I don't think that it could be. But I don't think so. Bitcoin being the um, equivalent to uh, gold, I get that. The mi I get the mining part. I get... Uh, some of that that type of stuff um, but I don't think that it would be the uh, equivalent to um, what they're trying to propose if it does hey I'll admit that I'm I'm wrong but you know as a XRP uh, person who has done digging um, and thinking on this um, I think XRP fits that bill more so than anything um, so um, that's just that. But anyway, crypto bulls have long championed Bitcoin as a modern day replacement for gold. And by one measure, the new markets is already close to surpassing bullion. In that respect, the total value of the market, um, again, is under two trillion, putting it on nearly equal footing with the amount of gold held for private investment purposes, according to a new report from Bernstein. And investors, um, what we need to find is return streams that can hedge the basement risk for um, to be a diversifier of equity risk at higher levels of inflation and these assets cryptocurrencies might have the potential to perform that function the firm said tuesday and note to clients so now what i would like to say about this is that uh, when you start to see cryptocurrencies move um, then you're going to start to see gold, silver, precious metals move slowly behind it and then catch up. Now, um, gold is about 34000 to the dollar when you look at the uh, U.S. debt clock. Then you have silver at 4000 So you have uh, some competing assets. Um, I think and my thought would be be that ethereum might fit that bill more so than bitcoin but you know i'm not here to um compete with that idea um because i'm again i love xrp more so than any of these other assets and um i'm sorry to say it so i just wanted to put this out there but um we are close to um finding our hedge against uh the central banks um that's pretty much what i wanted to uh, make clear and again, as I've told you, the tide is turning when it comes to um, people getting out of the traditional markets, going into a non-traditional market, which is the parallel economy, people's economy, the cryptocurrency economy. And if you are into to the traditional market, it's kind of similar in a way. I know it's kind of tricky or 
but if you are into investing or trading or whatnot, it's kind of similar, kind of the same. You got some of the same features, some of the same, you know, um, platform ideas that coincide with uh, what's about to take place with cryptocurrency. So anyway, here's a tweet from Barry Gensler, GG, and he's looking forward to attending the Green Swan Conference. And we need to think more about sustainable hashtag green crypto. So if you're out there on Twitter, you can follow me at DRich5531, by the way. And then make sure you go ahead and um, like this video. I mean, sorry. You can do that as well, but like his tweet. Retweet that tweet, okay? I'm going to retweet that tweet. And I'm going to quote that tweet while we're doing this right here live. Hashtag XRP. Okay. Let's get that hashtag XRP and then hashtag green crypto, right? So let's go ahead and do that right now. And then that's all we need to do and tweet that out. So he knows that we're, we're on to his um, little green swan 2021 event, <clears throat> which is coming up June 2nd to the 4th. So pay attention to that. And um, you could go to bis.org to look at that. Um, you got the virtual, it's a virtual conference. You can also view the agenda right here. And on this channel, um, again, I did talk about the Green Swan um, type of event before, and this is coming from Al Jazeera. The Green Swan climate event could cause the next um, financial crisis, and this is also coming from the BIS. The BIS urges greater global mobilization of government resources to contain financial fallout from the climate change. And again, this is their agenda, folks. And you got to kind of pay attention what you know what the agenda is, what they're trying to you know promote to you and lead you to, and kind of shift the narrative to um, that type of idea for you to get into some greener, um, efficient type cryptocurrencies. Okay, the so-called black swan theory was developed by author Nassim Nicholas Taleb to describe rare events that have an outsized, often negative impact. And now the Bank of International Sentiment is warning of a green swan event linked to climate change that could have wide-reaching consequences for the global financial system. And this was back on January 20th, 2020 utter the term black swan in financial circus and it will conjure images of an economic catastrophe triggered by a rare event people should have seen coming if only they had opened their eyes and again <clears throat> since this time january 2020 i do believe a lot of folks have been opening up their eyeballs and this is why you have people uh saying certain things in the mainstream about cryptocurrency whether you like the person or not um, you know what the uh, point of the matter is that we are now in a position to um, get our eyes set on cryptocurrency and people are hearing about it more and more and more. I was at the um, event the other day um, and I was asking every folks that I seen every every person. Hey, um, it was mostly the, the gentleman. Hey, um, just quick question. Um, do you think XRP is going to the moon? And that, you know, most people were like, you know, yeah, I don't gamble or, you know, what is that? But the younger kids though, those kids knew what Dogecoin was. Some you know, one kid actually knew what XRP was. He was actually giving me a load of different type of cryptocurrencies and I was actually surprised. Um, but you know, um, what I'm saying is you ask anyone more than likely they're going to say, yeah, I heard of it. Or, you know, they'll give you some sort of, you know, talk about it. So the more and more we um, talk to people about cryptocurrencies or um, doing that type of thing, I think that uh, we can actually begin to uh, get into it. All right. So um, in a paper titled Green Swan, which is the Basel based institution, Basel, okay, remember that word, because we're going to be talking about the Basel 3 and 4. Um, here tomorrow, which um, I did say we would talk about based on the Basel 3. Um, Basel based institution wars climate change could unleash potentially extremely financially disruptive events 
that could trigger the next global financial crisis. And to contain the fallout, the BIS is urging the global coordination among central banks, regulators, and supervisors, including jettisoning backward-looking risk assessment models that are not fit for uh, gauging the far-reaching consequences for climate disruptions. And the number um, of extreme weather events has quadrupled over the last 40 years. Only 44% of the financial losses caused by those type of events are now covered in the United States and Asia. It's just 8% and in Africa only 3%. And I think that we might be on the brink of observing something that might be uh, behind the next uh, systemic financial crisis. Uh, one of the um, authors from this report uh, mentioned. Um, and the more extreme climate scenarios start to play out, central banks having played a vital role in the financial crisis uh, might be asked to step in as the climate rescue of last resort. And then there is no silver bullet Central banks are not going to save the world again. Well, I guess this is why we have cryptocurrencies because their systems are um, dying uh, when it comes to fiat currency. And I'll just leave that at that. And you can um, see what's going on. The narrative is being painted. The narrative is shifting um, in regards to um, this tug of war um, back and forth when it comes to uh, cryptocurrency, gold, silver. Um, they kind of want to make you look away from it. They kind of want to get you out of it. Um, but the folks that are really, really um, in tune to this, um, you're going to reap the rewards um, tremendously uh, because I believe soon uh, we'll find that that uh, best to yet to come thing is really, really going to happen for all of us. So um, stay on course and let's um, get this um, cryptocurrency as much as you can because I think that they want to scare you out of it. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Um, this is coming from News Channel Nebraska, Northeast Nebraska. And the reason why I wanted to give Nebraska some, some love is because I lived in Iowa for eight years and um, Nebraska is kind of hot and muggy in the, in the summertime and so is Iowa. But, you know, just wanted to give them some love with an article but anyway HSBC is selling most of its U.S. retail banking businesses and this is by Michelle Toe and the reason why I wanted to bring this up is because as we can see we go here look at who we got there Chris Larson right H this is 2017 okay so this is all starting to play out for us um, right in front of our faces and you know I'm glad I'm able to report on it if other folks are not reporting on it and if they are I'm happy that you know they are because we want to share uh, the dots connect the dots making sure that we are on pace uh, with XRP and knowing that XRP is actually the one because when you see Chris Larson showing up with HSBC and you start seeing these um businesses retail businesses going out um, things like that um, it lets you know um, that some of these things are um, moving fast and we're getting closer to uh, this all taking place especially with that green uh, swan conference um, especially coming up with the, the lawsuit and things like that so again um, it's a tug of war it's a battle um, these folks um, with the central banks are not going to uh, just give up easy all right so they either have to get along, get in line, um, or they're pretty much finished, is, is what I would like to say about them. So um, again, this is uh, Chris Larson, HSBC, who appoints Technology Advisory Board. And again, this is January 17th. That number is always coming up, isn't it? 17, huh? 17 is always coming up. I just... You know what? Let me let me not even get off track, folks. Anyway, compromising senior technologists and entrepreneurs from the U.S., China, India, and Israel, they will help the S HSBC capitalize on opportunities in artificial intelligence, biometric, blockchain, and data science. And HSBC has appointed a technology advisor board and senior CEOs from around the globe who will now be focusing on how the bank can take advantage of technological um, innovation, um, combat cybercrime, and leverage its global infrastructure. 
So you get um, Chris Larson here, executive chairman of Ripple. He's an expert in blockchain. You got banking experts, cybersecurity expert, transmit security. Um, again, I mean, it's all it's all here for us, folks, for us to kind of know where we're headed. You know, there's disruption. The opportunities are resulting from technologically driven changes in customer behavior and enterprise design, new trends in financial technology and product innovations in new technologies. Um, the Technology Advisory Board is key to helping us adopt technology that will make HSBC simpler, better, and faster for our 46, minute custom, 46 million customers um, and 250,000 colleagues across our global network. And we have made significant progress in the last couple of years, including recently become the biggest financial services user of biometrics globally through touch ID, voice ID, facial recognition, and through our participation in a proof of concept of blockchain and trade finance. It's all there. It's all there. So um, get into that XRP as much as you can because your man right there, he's a he said, is he, what did he say? He's a master expert. Well, I know what that means, that he specializes in, and he's good at what he does. So um, we're in good shape. Anyway, the um, speaking of the uh, lawsuit, and the, we'll end it here because I've been kind of jabbing a little bit too much. Sorry. I've been up early this morning. Um, I had to take a trip out to uh, way a little bit up north, a two-hour drive this morning, so I'm kind of like loopy a little bit. Sorry, folks. Uh, but anyway, um, the SEC attorney moves to withdraw uh, from the Ripple case. Um, this was Thursday, uh, 527, which is today. Um, the um, Dugan Bliss Senior Trial Counsel of the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission is seeking the court's permission uh, to withdraw from the Ripple case. The attorney says that he is leaving the agency after spending over 10 years there and after uh, Bliss's departure, the SEC will be represented by the remaining counsel, George G. Tenario and um, Daphne Waxman, John Daniels and others. And the litigation process is being supervised by SEC attorney Preethi. Um, the Ripple case is still in its pre-trial discovery phase. As reported by you today, the SEC is now seeking to expand the number of dispositions. And earlier this month, Magistrate Judge Sarah Netburn greenlit the SEC memorandum of understanding requests that are being sent to foreign security regulators to obtain, obtain documents from overseas trading platforms and Ripple non-U.S. partners. And in April, the court granted Ripple's motion to compel the SEC to produce documents related to Bitcoin, Ethereum, as well as XRP. And during the April 9th conference, Bliss said that the agency had not taken an official position on Ethereum, despite a comment made by Bill Hinman, the former director of the SEC's Division of Corporation Finance, about Ethereum not being a security. And so what I want to uh, make clear uh, this is my understanding of the current situation, and I don't want to be over the technical, but the SEC itself, my understanding is, has not taken an official position. There is no action that it took to say Bitcoin is not a security, and Ether is not a security. So anyway, folks, um, people were getting out of that lawsuit. You don't know why, but, you know, I beg to wonder um, what... Uh, caused him to get about it or after 10 years, um, especially if uh, they know what they're doing, um, trying to um, get at Ripple in, in this lawsuit. So anyway, um, that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's news. I'm sorry for uh, babbling a little bit too much today, but you know sometimes it's a little bit necessary because you get to learn a little bit more about my personality as I get more comfortable um, on the microphone share a lot of different things with you guys as you guys are uh, now on the journey with me. So again, I appreciate it. I appreciate the subscribers to the channel. And again, um, I'm still working on that, uh, um, the uh, posting uh, for uh, my website. So, um, you know, bear with me on that. Um, and 
make sure that if you are following me on um, YouTube or whatnot, hit the like button or the thumbs up, the subscribe button if you're listening to me for the first time. And um, again, all of the platforms that I am on are in the description of every video. And you can also read all of the articles that I leave in a video as well. So anyway, guys, um, enjoy the rest of your Thursday. We'll get back to you tomorrow, which is happy Friday um, to end our week. And we're going to end it on a good note with some better information um, when it comes to Basil 4 and 5. We're going to get into that and we're going to find some other news to crack open. Anyway, take care. God bless. And as always, treat everyone with class, dignity and respect. Bye-bye.